Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how easy it is to propagate your tomatoes um, to grow infinite numbers of tomato plants from the tomatoes that you already have. Um, I have a bunch that I planted in the spring, it's late summer, they're still doing okay. Uh, my little niece loves tomatoes, so I want to give her some plants off of these so she doesn't have to start from scratch from seed for her fall tomatoes. So I'm going to show you how you can save months off of your plants by taking cuttings uh, from the suckers from your original tomato plants. Now, let me explain something. What I'm going to show you how to do this, uh, propagating, growing more plants from the suckers, you can do this from any part of the plant. The reason most people do it from the suckers is because it's a part of the plant that you normally would prune and throw away anyway. So instead of throwing them away, you can just turn them into all new plants. But understand that it doesn't have to actually be the sucker. You can do this with any part of the plant. So if you don't see very many suckers on your plant or you wanna cut more than what you can get from just a few suckers, you can do this from any part of the plant. It's gonna work exactly the same. So this is how you identify a sucker. Anywhere that the plant is growing up the stem and out, if there's another plant growing right up in the middle, right, there's going to be three. Because most of the times you see there's just two. Main stem. <clears throat> Let me show you here where you can see a little better. So this is normal. Main stem and, and plants growing out of it. This right here, main stem growing out of it and then one in the middle, that's a sucker. So anywhere you have a sucker, you, you kind of want them to be, you know, a good size. You can pull this off, have some water ready to put it immediately in the water, um, and it will start to root, and you will get a clone of your original plant. Main stem, side shoot, sucker. This is going to save you a lot of time because if you had to start from seed to get a plant up to this size, um, you know, that would take you probably two months. So this is definitely going to get these things producing really quick and assure us another fall harvest. And of course, you're going to want to have to have something ready to put them directly into water as soon as you pull them, especially when it's crazy hot like it is right now, because they're going to start wilting pretty much immediately. So give them something to drink while you're working and looking and plucking and pulling. All right, you're going to want these. Um, you can put them in anything, mason jar, glass jar. You just want to make sure that the part that's in the water doesn't have any leaves on it. And you really don't need a whole lot of foliage because, you know, you don't want it trying to pull too much from the plant. This one's not too bad, so we can put that back. For example, like this one, we don't want to leave this extra foliage where it would be under the water because that's going to start to rot in your water. So anything that's under the water, and really we don't even need this, that's just taking extra nutrients from the plant. So we're going to cut that and put it in the water. You just need a little bit at the top for photosynthesis. And then just put them somewhere where there's some indirect sunlight. Um, I have a bay window, so that's where I usually put these things. But you can just put it on a windowsill. That'll work fine. Um, and give it, you know, a couple days to about a week. And it should start to put on some roots. So we'll come back and check it and see how they do. All right, after three days... I put it against my shoe, you can see um, that little bit of root coming out of it. Uh, you can put it in the ground at this point, and it will continue to grow, keep it wet. Um, you can leave it in the water for a few more days, or because I know these aren't going to be ready to go into the new beds for a little bit, um, I'm going to go ahead and fill some cups and put them in some cups and water them in. That's going to give them a really good, strong start. Now be careful not to break these roots and get them down in there and get them watered. And then I'll be able to uh, keep them going in the cups a little longer and get them planted. All right, anywhere that you see that there's blossoms or young fruit, you're going to want to go ahead and just clip that off. You don't want the plant to have to concentrate on producing uh, fruit and blossoms right now it needs to focus all of its energy to uh, producing roots so any fruit or any blossoms you nip it in the bud take the bud off 
uh, stop it from producing fruit. You see this one right here is already trying to make a little tomato. We need to take that fruit off of there because we don't want it focusing on producing fruit. Uh, you'll kill the plant. It needs to focus on producing just roots. Dig down deep right now and get those roots good and established. They can produce fruit later. Now there is a great spiritual parallel and message in that. Um, if you're interested to hear it, I will put a link in the description to a short video devotion on our ministry channel where we touch on that topic. All right, it's as simple as that. Once they're in the cups and established, you can leave them there as long you know, as you want, you know, until they outgrow the cups or you can put them directly into the ground. You could even skip this process and just put them straight into the ground. But I like, I like to baby them a little while in the cups before I put them out, you know, and like this, you can make more for friends and for family. You can pretty much get infinite numbers of free tomato plants, you know, from the, you know, one or two that you already have because they grow, you know, like crazy through the summer and you can just keep doing this. So you can really get a lot of plants for pretty much nothing.